Hey guys, it's Minister Quinitra and I want to talk about our futures today. I want to talk about um, our futures and where we're going. Please excuse me, every time I start a video I try to look at the volume and that's why sometimes it sounds like I'm shouting in other videos because I want to make sure you guys can hear me um, good and clear. People say that, you know, speaking about hell, and I want to just start off saying, by saying clearly, I do understand, but we, we, we go through things every day that's too much for us. Some people can't stand it. They kill themselves. Some people take medication. Some people are never the same after that when they go through something very uh, direly life-changing. But one thing is evident, we all must face whatever it is at that moment that we are faced with. That we have to go through. And that happens a lot in our life. Certain jobs we go on. And we respond. Our response is what. We try to alter. What we go through by a certain response. Giving back to the situation. And more than half the time. The responses that we give back to the situation. Doesn't even help. It makes it worse. Even if it's not for the other person. It's, it's, it's bad for your mental. For your heart. And it begins to. Bring about other actions in your life. If you go through something bitter, people always snap at you. Now you gotta have the first word. Um, you gotta start talking back to people. You gotta start being rude. You gotta uh, have the last word, the first and the last. You wanna argue about everything. If you went through something when you were young, now you gotta start repeating the same thing generationally. Spirits enter you, and you start repeating the same thing to somebody else that you didn't went through. And then you start blaming. For some people that I know personally, on my mom. Uh, treated me like that you blame your mom but then you go back and turn around and blame the person and go back to tormenting the person it's a sick cycle that our minds go through we're trying to fight our uh, generational curses and then there's things that you go through that you don't understand that uh, 10 generations before you did you're nine years old going through all that mess but you don't realize when somebody else was young in your family two generations back before you were born went through things that they never um dealt with overcame now that's you're dealing with it so you're dealing with think about that if you can think back think back think back think back you got all these generations all back from slavery all the way back from adam and eve all the way to you that you're dealing with all these things uh that you don't even know why do i feel this way why do i do these kind of things what's going on it's because your family lineage went through all this stuff but what you're supposed to be doing, you're supposed to be telling yourself, Father God, I rebuke generational curses. Now, I want to say something. A lot of people don't know, but they spend their time badgering other people. You know, they some people got jobs. They have a little normal routine. And because they have that, they find a little complacency uh, compartment, little department in their life and their mind. They don't feel stressed because they got their little nice little department. They may have a little man on, on their side. They're not struggling like other people. They got somebody that comes home to them, is faithful, and that loves them. So they, they got some type of egoism, pride, or something that they feel like, well, my life is all structured. I ain't going through all that. Then you want to start pointing at other people. God did not tell you to do that. You got generational spirits on you that you need to break off. You could even probably wonder why you dealing with drugs and dealing with things. Your, your father could have been secretive in a bathroom doing heroin all of his life. And your mom and your grandma. You could be going through things and you are going through things that you know. You're going through things that you know that is coming from other people. When I get before myself inside of a prayer room, my bathroom, on the floor, wherever I'm praying at with my roommate, I'm asking God to rebuke generational curses in my life. I'm asking God to rebuke certain things that I see in a generation, even as I was growing up in my family. Things that would make somebody angry and get mad just for, for me speaking it, right? You know, I have a brother in my life that, you know, I, I barely get to see. I love very much, very, very dearly. And, you know, there is no connection of, of, of a relationship there. You know, I have a lot going on in my life, not just family, but friends and just people. Before they'll find something good, they'll find something bad. 
And then it's, I'm going to be sweet and I want to stab you and say something. And then, you know, you got a jihad war. Why are you worrying about this? Why are you worrying about that? Because God worries about it and God is concerned about it. Time and time again, I'm looking under my comments again about hair and weave. And, you know, someone is saying something that I haven't even, you know, thought about. Meaning, have you thought about to ask God a question about weave? I just want to say something to be all around honest. This is ridiculous ever since I came to YouTube. It's like YouTube is a world of its own. And I have never heard anybody say something in life. All the places that I have went, I have seen... Um, T.D. Jake's wife, Juanita Bynum, very powerful woman of God, uh, Cindy Trim, God that speaks to her, uh, all powerfully, all these different people that has went to heaven, um, spoken with God, got things from the throne of God, and all of these things about, hey, what to do, what not to do, all of these other powerful men and women of God, I have never seen somebody write a book about, this is a sin. Now, you got all this crazy stuff that people do um, in Africa, and you got certain things that God um, forbids curses on. People are speaking witchcraft over certain things, especially um, like in Africa. I was telling my roommate that, you know, Prophet Ed is a powerful man of God. And I was just like, why we don't see this kind of stuff uh, in America with all this kind of movement of the Holy Ghost and you could just wave your hand like a guy does in New Zealand and somebody falls out in the spirit. But my roommate, you know, said something to me that really astonished me uh, and it pricked my mind. You know, these people in these places, just like it was in Jerusalem and all these places, you have active warlocks and active witches, people who teleport people who show up in your bedroom they have spiritual wives and they they go through uh curses and hoodoo and voodoo they have open witch doctors that you could just go through like it's on the corner we have a psychic that reads your palm but you got people who are able to go in these other places and just speak witchcraft someone is automatically dying you can't even step foot in somebody's house everybody knows the warlock on the block everybody knows the witch on the block everybody knows that you can take a, a piece of a diamond or a piece of a cloth or a piece of a hair thing and go and grab it and put it on somebody and then when you go and put it on that person, they die and go to hell. You know, I can see where all these different uh, myths and stuff come from. You got people doing uh, uh, female genital mutilation when it comes to women. You got all these different things in the world that, that is going on and taking place. And you got all these jumbled up uh, beliefs and knowledge going on. And I believe that certain things were made and created from the devil to torment people, to make them fearful. But you got to know who you are in God. You got to know who you are in Christ. You can say something up and down and be like, I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm not going to do this anymore. And somebody will still come at you because that is not the true reason. There was a spirit behind it. I want to encourage you guys to say this first and, and, and last and foremost. If you don't like something that I'm saying or don't like at all, or if you got a problem with my hair and weave, do you know there's so many people on YouTube that you can follow? You can unfollow me and you can go and you have freedom. That's what I mean by certain people may feel that you feel stuck. But if you are here, there, that means that there is something on the inside of you that's fighting you. But that little part of you say, listen to her, it's God. But maybe the majority of something of darkness could be in you. It's, you are not to be ashamed and afraid. I think I teach people by my page. Do not be ashamed and afraid of your mess. Get cleaned up. Because it becomes not of God for someone to feel like a God or close to it. To feel like I'm going to make you say and do something. And I'm going to do it on my time and make you do it. I'm going to make you do it. And I'm going to tell you something. And then anytime you give somebody access over you to do something. And they gain power, especially if they're doing it rudely and disrespectfully. Be, as soon as you drop the ball and tell somebody, talk to me correctly. And you lose that salt. And you let a person gain access over you and let them do it in a way that was very rude. 
they will always come at you in a rude way and feel like they don't have to talk to you respectfully. They will do it in a rude way and they will keep coming at you and keep coming at you. But I tell you one thing, for those who out there who feel like wigs and all that stuff is a sin, there is so many things on you that somebody else, the next person, if you start a YouTube channel and somebody comes to you and says something about you, and it may not be the area of weave or something on makeup, but it's something else that you have a, 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 a problem or something in your life that someone can pinpoint out. Everybody has a strength to be like, you know what? If you really, really, truly deep down inside feel that way, there is a God and a creator that's out there. And before anybody joins a church or goes to a congregation, God is able and well enough and strong enough to take care of every last citizen and human being on the face of this earth. He, he's so powerful to let people uh, die and leave the earth and let babies be born. 50, a thousand at a time each day because there was trading off places of the earth for people to die and go out and people to come in through birth canals and be birthed through C-sections or whatever it is. God knows how to deal with all. And if you love God and you have a mature relationship with God, you would not be pointing the finger trying to correct someone to the point where you get out of character, you have an attitude or you get upset or something in your mind is ready to go and judge somebody because it's a form of judging. We are all trying to escape a burning hell. Nobody is special, too beautiful enough, too rich or too poor, or too humble or too meek or too arrogant to escape judgment day. I have told people, if you feel like you're so confident in what you're saying, that means that you are able to go before the throne of God when judgment day comes. And what you are telling somebody, you are able and bold enough to tell to God people go why would I want to say it to God because if you can go to your family while you're talking about somebody else badger pull somebody down make them feel bad take them off their little spiritual podium so to speak and make them feel bad and let's just say you begin to make them believe what you're believing and it's not even not even true but you wait and all of all you're getting to get to God and stand before God to find out that it was nonchalant and it was unnecessary for you to badger somebody when somebody is unstoppable, when somebody is so sinful, uh, we're, we're talking about like an out of control kid or whatever, you, you, you begin to take it to the throne of God and you pray and you give it to God for God to break it. When God wants something not done, not worn, not this, not that, God knows how to go to somebody. And everybody has a space. And all that, that everybody could do is preach to you the word of God. And if a person wants to pick it up, they pick it up. And if a person doesn't want to pick it up, you don't have to pick it up. There's Denny's, there's Motel 6, there's 7-Eleven and, 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 and uh, Mobile. There's uh, Valero. Everybody has a choice of a gas station that they want to go to. Is it a sin? Now, the person doesn't pick Valero over Mobile or 7-Eleven gas station Exxon. Is it a sin, even though the Bible says uh, 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 food, when you eat too much is gluttony and a sin, you will suffer uh, the amount of the sin of gluttony if you let it take you out to a point where you gain cancer, you gain so much weight that, that the fat has clogged the arteries in your heart and you die before your time. But I guarantee you, you could wake up in heaven and you'd be like, well, God, how is it that the people on the earth was talking about, I, you know, I, I, I die with a wig on my head, I die even when people were telling me all my life you're gonna die because you over eight and what if god looked at you and said my child it was a sin but however my my blood what saved you my daughter is that that's not important in life to the degree of my blood the blood of jesus christ is what saved and got you here into heaven now if you died in your sin if you died in your sin and you didn't know me and you did gluttony and all these different things, not only would that sin have taken you out early, but also you died without my blood is what landed you in hell. What lands you in heaven is the blood of Jesus Christ, repenting, turning from your sins. There's a lot of vanity out of here. And a lot of people who are just now new coming into my channel, we spoke about vanity. If you, won't, if you weren't born and came into this world, the way that you came in, which was uh, sinful, eating from the, the tree of uh, good and evil for Adam and Eve. And through one person, sin came to all. And the Bible talks about through one person, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, now life has came to all. 
if you don't know how to break down the word of God with the Holy Ghost and you come around and you start badgering people and, and taking innocent people's minds and making them believe that uh, weave and hair and nails is, is a way to go into hell. There are certain people who carry things a certain way that is not right. There are some people out here, they can't even uh, go out the house without wearing uh hair and nails and weave and, and don't want to talk to nobody until they get their makeup on and lashes it's because it's an idol to them yes they can go to hell because it's an idol to them is it an idol for all people no it's not it is totally completely certainly not an idol to everybody you got people out here uh who would think they're just so ugly and would probably commit suicide and turn the gun on themselves if they couldn't wear their hair nails and weave you got certain people to what's normal for you wearing jeans. If another girl would put it on, just like you see a Caucasian lady, let's talk about that. Slim and tall, and, and, and the shorts is way well above her knees, and nobody says nothing to her because she's slim and, and whatever, and the way she carry herself, she's okay. But you put it on a black lady with thighs, and the way she walks and twists her hips is, a, is a sinful, and it's not of God. Come on, let's talk about it. There, there is something that you could be walking around daily and you have tons of riches and you're a rich man and you run a company and you run a Christian network and you have tons of money. But then you got another person on another side of the world who is a cartel drug person, has a lot of money and buys all this in vain stuff. So having money for them was a sin and landed them into hell because they didn't have the right heart to carry it out. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? I think that even after breakthrough, for some of you. Somebody can preach hell so good or heaven so good that you wouldn't even come out of the box still. That is something that's going to be between you and God and, and still nobody can judge you on. But you have a judgment day to face one day in heaven. You have a judgment day to face about everything that you're doing. You have a judgment to face. There was a hell that we must escape in the future and you better get your ducks in a row and you better get your life right and get your things together because life you live it once and you die twice you die you go to hell if you die and go to hell without the blood of Jesus Christ and you gotta suffer the lake of fire after that so in all you're getting please Stop badgering other people. I know I can say it to a kingdom come. I already know. People are going to continue to do it. But if you feel like you hate me so much. Or you know. People do that. They love torture. Have you ever noticed that about mankind? They could. They know from jump they don't like you. They'll still follow your page. They'll still look at you uh, behind your back. I got tons. I have a lot of enemies who look at my page. They'll look at you. Read your posts. Read stuff. And instead of moving on and be the mature bigger person. Here is the answer for God. For, for, for you. If you don't like the person, don't say in your mind, oh, I, I, I feel like I'm going to be a savior. God is a savior to all. I could never think that all my group chat members or anybody that I'm ministering to, if I want to take the place of God and say, but God, I'm trying to save them, but you told me to. You might want to think about that. That's going to be flesh right there. <laughs> you, you, you might want to reconsider and think about that part. But so many people are caught in self, self-righteousness. You took it to take it upon yourself to feel that you want to play God. But even when a person is coming in the name of the love of God, just like me and other people, minister women of God and men of God, we're badgered any, either all the way around that it go. We badger all the way around that it go. But people take it upon themselves to stand in front of God and say, I want to tell you something. But even me, when God tells me to speak the message and keep going, I am called to only speak the message and keep going. After you sow that seed, then God begins to remind the person, okay, you judged her because she was a female. You didn't want to receive the word of God. How can you judge someone? If, if there's money in your hand, you're not going to judge a person. Then if, if, if it's a woman of God and say, I got a million dollars right now for the per first person who called. I'm telling you, we got selective hearing and different things that God is trying to deliver us out of, but we have a deceptional spirit that's over us. And, and, and right when we begin to try to call and call out something or just say something in a way of love, offense rises up. My God, I feel Holy Ghost right now. And we judge. But as soon as it's something that we want, 
we begin to have the knowledge to understand. Boy, I, 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 I want to thank you for this hundred, this million dollars. I want to thank you for it. Boy, I tell you, the Lord knows how to, how to, how to bring breakthrough in, in certain things into our life. He know how to bring certain things into our life and bring it through the right vessels. Okay, well, if he knows how to bring a million dollars into somebody that you would even receive a word of God from as a minister, but you're still looking at the person on YouTube. I find that quite odd. If you really don't like the person, please don't torment them. Please leave them and, un and unfollow them. Unsubscribe. Because this word of God is for raw, for people, for people who have a hard time listening to God, for people who could almost miss hell by another step and making it out with your socks being burnt off on your heel. This is the message of ministry that I have. And I want people to be blessed. If this is the last message that you have to break through your own mindset and your own knowledge that you have that you operate in, then let this be the last stop for you. Stop looking at the person that's preaching a message. Stop doing all those things. This person is not trying to be evil or speak witchcraft. This person is not faking and shaking. You know, you would, you would want to wish to, to come to be appreciative of people like me out here is someone who wants to take your money and say I need money for a prophecy and and speak a word of God to you that seems right for the moment but it never comes to pass you better start making decisions on if I'm badgering this person she's right let me just un unfollow her and unsubscribe and go because if you have judgment that bad for somebody then just please keep it moving because we're, we're trying we, we're trying to get missions out here and get it done we're trying to get missions out here and get it done and, and I don't take this no more than this. No, hey guys, I don't take this no more than this. Open it. Open it. You're trying to preach Christ. You're trying to preach Christ to a, in the midst of a dying world that's hateful. You could be in a room full of atheists and trying to preach God and they're cursing at you, saying don't listen to her, this and that, but one person wants to give their life to God and here's the message. That's, that's what my ministry is and what my channel is for. And that's all I take it for. I'm not here to build personal relationships or even per se what God says. Be friendly to a point of worrying about what somebody feels about what I'm saying. And then I have to take make up the different things on. But for the people who have been following me for a long time, I used to deliver messages at my job with the headphones on. And I used to look so bad and tore up. And I, I, I barely got any views. Um, people would come and make fun of me and different things because I had a mindset to say, you know what? All those things made me this or whatever, and I'm going to preach to God just like I have. I have a few videos on like Aaliyah and all that, but my, my subscribers and different things didn't start going up until I started looking like this. And even there, even even at times now when I'm fasting or doing whatever I want to do and I feel like I want to bring a message, there are sometimes I'm looking tall from the floor up with my hair wrapped and I just find it funny I said God people are blaming and throwing an arrow at me but I noticed that when I met my prettiest or I met my most up to uh, up to scale state that that's when I get the most views something's not wrong with me it's something wrong with the world how we perceive things we want something pretty and nice you can't sell a toy to someone for Christmas if it's dirty and you just pulled it back from the bottom of a house you gotta pick it up take it shine it off make it presentable clean it off package it up put it from a manufactured toy company and put it on the shelf at a nice price and then you got places where somebody may not want that toy they give it to Goodwill or give it to other places you still got to have it wrapped and looking nice for someone to take it home to know that that toy is not going to cause bacteria infections for their kid to kill them and take them off the earth so that's how ministries are in, in, in the spirit you may have a brand new, brand new ministry who's upset, who's upscale, look like a major church, mega church that people go to. Then you got a not so looking good church that could be like a goodwill in the spirit. They still got good things in there. They're selling it. They're keeping it right. They sanitize the couches and the, the whatever, but it's not not new. People still go and shop inside a goodwill. And that's just certain things. Hey, baby. That's just certain things out here. That God has left on the earth for uh, us, for Him to speak to us, and we still haven't caught on, because a lot of us don't have the Holy Ghost. We want to take everything as an offense. I'm telling you, the way that we operate and move and live in our life has got to do with how we grew up. It's the spirits that we operate out of. The Bible says, "Be transformed by the renewing of, of your mind." A lot of people have came to God and are saved, 
but you're still operating from the, the, the traits and, and thoughts and, 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 and deeds that your parents have brought you up in. It is time to learn and put on Christ and get the Holy Ghost to understand the mystery so you can answer for yourself, not for me, because I got peace. I have never heard this until I came on YouTube. Never. About the things that I get badgered and, and, and uh, taken in about. But you got so many other people, men and women of God out here, who people listen to and they got weak different things, but... You know, I think it's I think it's a spirit, you know, like I said, a spirit that wants to come against me and other people who may who they feel is weak, you know. So you guys be blessed out here and um, make sure that you're listening to the important things in life and making sure that you're following the Holy Ghost. There's a lot of things I hear that don't make sense. There is a lot of things I hear that don't make sense at all. How can one person go to go to hell for one sin and then somebody else? Don't go to hell because they didn't idolize what the last person did. The same thing of vanity. Because all is vanity if you're not naked before God. Why didn't God, after Adam and Eve sinned, say, if you wear clothes, I'm going to throw you into hell? That's what we're trying to get into. I know that the serpent came to deceive you that you needed clothes. But my question to everybody who's got such a problem with hair and all of that. Why didn't God, instead of asking people and badgering the men and women of God, why don't you ask God? Why didn't he make it a mandate and a rule after Adam and Eve sinned and they had to put on the clothes? Guess what? Guess what happened? After Adam and Eve sinned on the holy ground that it was supposed to be only for us being naked, God sent an angel to, to take them out of the land of Garden of, of Garden uh, of Eden. It was a land where you were supposed to be your most naked before God, your most honest, your most purest before God. And because they couldn't hold it and couldn't hold being vulnerable and being close to God, and they consider it shame to be close to God and to clothe themselves. God banned and pushed them to a place where we live it, where we live now on the earth, and the Garden of Eden is not on the earth anymore. Now we live in a land. Now we live in a land where you can wear clothes, you can wear uh, vanity things like nails, hair, makeup, and all these different things. We live in a land where it's permitted now. People going, will God answer the question through Cornetra, badger her about this or that? But can many of you turn back and ask God, God, why didn't you correct what Adam and Eve did? Why wasn't there a prophet or a man of God to come and say, hey, after Christ died or even after when Christ came to preach, hey, stop wearing all these things, my blood covered and reversed. If the blood of Jesus Christ came to cover, if the blood of Jesus Christ came to cover and reverse, what was being said and done. Then why, did, why didn't God give the mandate for us to go back the way that we were and say that we have to go back to being naked? Why wasn't there another Garden of Eden created? I understand that you want to be right on this particular thing, but you got to understand that it's totally wrong. I get persecuted a lot in my life for people going, oh, you think you're right. And it's just really God just coming through me and stating the correction. Of, of, of the state of the world. Jesus Christ's blood came to die for sin to save us from this world because he knew all types of things would happen. And it's up to people to take something, to let something, excuse me, take them out all the way up to a point where it becomes idolship before the Lord. PS4s are idol, uh, can be idol shit, but PS4s and all these different things that our kids play with, dolls, all this stuff is vanity. Vanity. Clothes are vanity. Anything that God didn't let us come into this world with is vanity. But God knows that we live here and he has an understanding for what we do, how we decide to get up, and how we decide to live life. But just like us as parents, we tell our children, in moderation, please, don't let nothing become a danger and a threat to your life and the kingdom of your soul. The Bible says, what profits are a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? 
God is speaking in scripture. There was an Old Testament and a New Testament. There was an old way and a new way. Out of all the things in the Bible, there were certain things that God spoke about the sins he said not do. Never heard him say anything about what people are badger about about YouTube. And on YouTube, I think it's ridiculous, actually. You're, you're running around scaring a lot of people because not only people are talking about hair, but they're talking about jeans. You got certain people who are out here crying and scared that God is going to do something to them if they don't get out of jeans. Please stop doing that to the man and woman of God. God doesn't bring tormenting spirits to people. Will God deal with someone like that if you call someone to go to hell for a certain personal belief you have with yourself? And you got people out here in error. Do you know that there are certain deceptional demons that speak to you and get into your mind? You have to learn the spiritual realm. I had to learn it. I'm sitting there doing certain things in the Lord wrong and half-heartedly. God had to correct me. So therefore, if God corrected me and corrected me about don't take the mark and making sure I don't take it, and he's corrected me about the word of God and how people get it misconstrued and he wanted to put me on the right path, how much more for you? But you can't even get the correction because you focused on people like me, making sure I don't want no hair and nails, whatever, then here comes our guy. I ain't trying to do all that. I ain't. That's when you said that. But if God said, let there, let there be no quarrels among you. Stop focusing on other people and focus your own, on your own relationship with the Lord. Because you're not perfect at all either. You got something that God can, can bring about to bring to you at the forefront. And if God keeps badgering it about you and when he's a God of patience and he's slow to anger with the word of God says, Google that please. And he's patient for you to come out. So if you're actually exercising impatience or frustration or judgment, Bible says, judge and you shall be judged. That means humble yourself and work out your salvation with fear and trembling like the word of God says.